I'm Stefan from the Ghost Guys, and in an investigation led by Jess, we're on the hunt for a highway woman. During the day, we'll be visiting the locations and hearing her stories, and at night we'll be returning to see if her spirit still remains. Accompanied by Rob and Matt, this is the life and afterlife of Lady Catherine Ferris. No Man's Land, Hertfordshire was notorious for highway robbery, but of all the stories, that of Lady Catherine Ferrers, the alleged highway woman and so-called wicked lady, still has a hold on the popular imagination here, with many ghostly goings-on still being attributed to her spirit. The popular legend goes like this. A young aristocratic woman turns to highway robbery after her husband squanders her extensive inheritance encompassing several substantial estates. To lessen the impact to her fortune, she turns to highway robbery, robbing merchants and guests to a home at Mark Yates' cell as they make their onward journey across this common. She is said to sneak out through a hidden passage behind the fireplace astride a black steed in the guise of men's clothing. Her reign of terror was suddenly ended when she was shot mid robbery. Her servants found her dying with a gunshot wound, still dressed in men's clothing, and I can only assume her horse whinnying somewhere in the background. If you think this sounds a little far-fetched, and many do, then we're here to find out, if not the ghost of Lady Ferrers, then who or what is haunting this town? In 1460, the Second Battle of St Albans was fought here. In the late 18th century, 25 skeletons were discovered sporadically about the commons, thought to be from that battle. In more recent history, in 1977, the body of 24-year-old Jane Shepherd was found dumped on this site. She had been raped and murdered. And in 2009, a seventh arm was discovered, later found to belong to Geoffrey Howe. Here we have Rob, on my right, Stefan, Acorn, or Matt, and I'm Jessica. I think if we just walk about a little bit, and see if we get any spikes. Are we near any power lines? Yeah, but I'm not picking anything up on mine, and these work with the same technology. The ridge isn't much like Just testing it, make yeah, sure it's definitely enough. working. It is, but that mine's not going off. You will just set them. Make sure your phone's off. I have got my phone on me. Yeah. I have anything on me. Yeah, my phone's oh, on airplane mode. Let me just check mine. <laughs> I'm check mine as well. Right, my phone's off. So it's, even though we're going uphill, the level where it's not interfering is staying steady, like the gap from the ground to wherever the interference is. Alright, well look, we've learned, the thing of this is, we can't use that. I think whatever this is, it's too constant that it must yeah. be picking up some sort of like, actual interference from something. So yeah. if we stick to using that one, because that's not picking up this same level of interference so you'll see that this when I'm actually going close to it it's setting it off but it's not oh. no so it's just not picking up that same interference so I think to get to make sure we've got a more reliable result yeah. is it will stick to using this one it must be working on a different bandwidth or something or no the or difference it picks up the difference is um, what that's doing is general because they're both generating an EM field. Yeah. That beeps as soon as anything in this EM field changes. Yeah. But it beeps once. Yeah. That's why if you go close to it, it'll beep. But no, I'm, already, to really in, I'm beep. already in this field. Yeah, yeah, I've literally got to almost yeah. be touching it with my skin for it to pick it up. But my, but if you were to, if I was to move right back out and come in with something electronic again, yeah. then it would set it off again. Right. 
So for something to set that off twice, you have to, it has to move near it, back, near yeah, it. Right. Whereas this we just do it whenever anything's changing in its field. Right, okay. So because it's getting some constant fluctuation, that's not that's just going to ignore it now because it's already beeped once to basically right. say Which is what it did that. before when you saw me lift it up. Yeah. I mean, it was beeped it, and now it's... it's that means Because it's, it's constant, it, it's ignoring that that's now. That's now its base level. Right. Okay, well, let's continue walking then, and um, let's see if we can pick anything up from this one. Do you know the name Catherine Ferrers? What? That moan? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a bird coming from a tree. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If that was you trying to communicate with us, thank you for that. Could you do it again? radio plane thing, when yeah. you look at the map for radio plane, it has all this area is marked as no fly zone. I was wondering that. But what could do it? I don't know. And why? But are they what, do you think that is they're blocking signals, radio yeah. signals? so that's not getting any radio signals. It's getting the occasional blip though, isn't it, from something? Yeah, we try pointing that antenna a lot Although... If there was something that was blocking it, blocking the radio signal, that would explain why our stuff doesn't really work. Okay, yeah, so let's how would that work? Because those planes they were flying earlier were radio controlled. Okay, so let's test that theory and go into the fly zone. Code of practice. So this is the flying zone. Yeah. So yeah, if you look here, it's just in like a triangle. Yeah. So this this is the fly zone. It's still happening. Yeah. So we can't solve that mystery. So it just came through. Yeah. Like what? All radio controlled aircraft. Well, I'll say we just wrap it up and head back because we need to go meet Paul and stuff now anyway. Yeah. She doesn't say anything about it being blocked. No. It can't be anyway because it's still doing it here. Yeah. Do you know how that back and I'll turn it off? Please. Might as well turn that off, save power. It is picking up a little bit more, but that's just because yeah. we're higher up, I think. Yeah, I um, okay, if there's anybody here who wants to communicate with us, you can let us know you're here by coming near this, or appearing if you can, and we can see you. Highwaymen or women? Let's get the shit out of here. <laughs> like foxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, should we go? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is yeah. anybody here? Please don't follow us home. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. That's all they go.
Uh. One of the reasons we've had to kind of end our investigation is because we seem to be getting some weird interference. It seems to be affecting all of our devices, so both the REM pods were going off at a certain height uh, consistently across this entire common as far as we've walked. Uh, the ghost box also didn't seem to be working. We seemed to get a few more responses when we came up higher, but it's maybe just because we were on higher ground. Uh, we wondered if maybe it's something blocking it due to the radio planes that they have, but we've come to the radio plane area and that's not the case, so we don't really have any explanation for what's causing it, but it's it's clearly nothing paranormal. I don't think we've found anything here because of the problems with the equipment. We've had a lot of interference, so no, not this time. So we've just kind of had to wander around hoping to find something. Unfortunately, because of the interference, it means we can't use our equipment, so we're relying on just either gut feeling if there's something there, um, or potentially trying to pinpoint something that's coming through odd through the equipment.